something was ripping her apart on the inside. Something was ripping her apart on the inside. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you excited at the power of God and how quickly the vengeance of God begins to speak? We are in the days of vengeance. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 24, Therefore, the Lord says, The Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, ha, I will rid myself of my adversaries and take vengeance on my enemies. He says, I will rid. In other words, I will get rid of them. God is saying, you will get rid of your enemies. Yeah. Let us read that scripture together. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 24. 1, 2, go. Let's read. I will read myself of my adversaries and take vengeance on my enemies. What is your desire for your enemies? It won't be long. I'm going to give you some time. You are going to tell God what your desire is. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11, Jesus says, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly father who is in heaven give good things to those that are asking? This morning you have an opportunity to ask God for anything. And when you ask, heavens will honor it. And part of what you are going to ask is judgment over your enemy. Praise the Lord. So you are going to pray when, I be, when we begin to pray in a way that God must answer. No, you forget about the one you call on answer. Today is that day. Somebody say, today is that day. Yeah. That my prayer must be answered. Let's rise to our feet. Let's do it now. In Psalms chapter 94, the Bible says, Oh Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs. Shine forth. One translation say, show your true color. You are going to lift up your voice and, and pray. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs, show your true colors to my enemies. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs, show your true colors to my enemies. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs, lift up your voice and pray. Show your true colors. Shine forth. Show your true colors. Shine forth. Lift up your voice and pray. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs, show your true color. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs, show your true color. Shine forth on my behalf. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs, Shine forth, show forth. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs, show forth, shine forth. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs, show forth, shine forth. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs, show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth. God of vengeance, show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth. God of vengeance, show forth on my behalf, shine forth. God of vengeance, show forth, shine forth. Lift up your voice and pray. Oh God of angels, show forth, shine forth, 
Show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth, God of angels, show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth, show forth. Shine forth. Lift up your voice and pray. This is the day of vengeance. We are in the day of vengeance. Show forth. Shine forth. Show forth. Shine forth. Show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth, show forth, shine forth. In Jesus' precious name. There is a nation in the Bible. There is a people, they have more right. God said, I will wipe them out of the face of their heart because they did not deal favorably with Israel. Because they did not deal favorably with them. Church, I want to beg you in the name of God. I'm not telling you what I feel like saying. I'm telling you what God is telling me. Make sure you don't seek anybody's heart or fall. Especially anyone in this church. Because we are under a very dangerous uh, umbrella right now. Please make sure you don't sabotage anyone in this church. God said, I will wipe the nation out of the face of the heart for not dealing favorably with Israel. We are going to pray. Everyone with any sickness in the body, that sickness, we cast it out, we send it back to the sender. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Every sickness and infirmity. Every sickness and infirmity. Every deformity and infirmity. In anyone's life. In anyone's body. We cast out. We reverse to the sender. We cast out. We send back to the sender. We cast out. We send back to the sender. Lift up your voice. God of vengeance. We cast it out. And send it back to the sender. God of vengeance will cast it out and send it back to the sender. Lift up your voice and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Every sickness, every infirmity is cast out. Every sickness, every infirmity is cast out. In Jesus' precious name, You know, if you don't pray this prayer, the Bible says, for how long will you endure the pain inflicted on you by Satan? In Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11, it says, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Every time God kills somebody on behalf of his child, is because that person has vowed that that child of God must die. So because somebody must die, then you have to go. So we have to declare those sentences in Jesus' precious name. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Take our sin. This morning we are going into the word of the Lord. Why is this? 
when we pray, you are not praying for God to manufacture or do something that is not already done. Jesus declared on the cross, he said, it is finished. So it meant everything that must be done was done. It is finished. To live in divine health was finished. To live in peace, Jesus finished everything. For you to have abundance, prosperity in your life, he finished it. But the only reason why we don't experience it all is because Satan is holding it back. So when we pray, we pray to push back on Satan so that we can receive what Jesus finished on the cross of Calvary. Praise the Lord. When we know this, don't forget when you are praying. You are not praying, you are not begging God to now do it. You are actually praying to stop Satan from stopping you. Praise the Lord. That's why not many people live to fulfill their destiny. Not many people live to see their destiny fulfilled in life. There are many people that will live in this world, come and go at the end of it all, they will have lived in the shadows of God's purpose for their lives. That will not be you in Jesus' name. Many people will only exemplify or, or, or manifest the shadow of God's will for them. Why? Because we have an enemy. Many will live not reflecting, not even showing, not looking like God's potentials in their lives. Why? Because there are satanic installations in the world. We live in a day that Satan is evil and is for real. Hallelujah. Those installations are there to stop you from actualizing God's will for your life. Anything that is not good, Satan is behind it. Anything that causes pain, Satan is behind it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9, the Bible says, For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. The more doors, the more oppositions, the more adversaries. Great doors, great invisible barriers, great opportunities, great oppositions. And many of these don't make sense. Many of these have no explanations. Many child, many people die for no reason that can be explained. We thank God because no one is going to die here in the name of Jesus. People die suddenly with no explanations. Many ones were created with great destinies. Even before they were born, the enemy began to attack that destiny. Moses was born with great destiny as a deliverer of Israel. But shortly before he was born, something arose in the anger of the king. Just look one day. He said, these people, the way they are growing, they can become stronger. They can join with our enemies and attack us. Every male child of the Hebrews should be killed. Just at the time of the birth of Moses. Praise the Lord. Let me read some stories to you. In Exodus chapter 1 and verse 10. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them. Lest they multiply. And it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us. So go up out of the land. Therefore, they set taxmaster over them to afflict them with their burdens. So that to make life difficult for them. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities. Pithom and Ramses, verse 12, let's read together. I want to go. One more time, let's read that line. 
Somebody say, the more I am afflicted, the more I will multiply, and the more I will grow. The more I am afflicted, the more I will multiply, and the more I will grow. The more I am afflicted, the more I will multiply, the more I will grow. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. So, before before he was born, Satan moved to kill him. I'm trying to explain. Now the question is this. What was Moses' offense? Praise the Lord. Uncountable number of people died for reasons like that. Also, when the Messiah was born, Jesus himself, there was another move of Satan. In Matthew chapter 2 and verse 16, then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, always have to watch out for the difficult pregnancies. Always have to watch out for the challenged pregnancies. There is a great potential, special hand of God on such babies. Not limited to them, but watch out for the difficult pregnancies. Watch out for the children born before nine months. Watch out for children, for the pregnancy that were attacked by threatened abortion, threatened abortion during the duration. Jesus was born, then Satan moved again. When he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly hungry. He sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and all his districts. From two years old and older. In verse 17, the Bible says, verse 18 says, verse 18 says, a voice was heard in Rama, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel's two children, twins, were killed. Death, unexplained. So I'm trying to show you how wickedly Satan is. Satan would try as much as possible to abort God's will. As a Christian, don't ever lose sight that you are in warfare. Also in Psalms chapter 7 and verse 9, the Bible says, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. You know what David called the wickedness of the wicked here? Have you ever found yourself in regret when your kindness was turned to the snare of the enemies against you? That was what happened to David, and I'm going to show you shortly. Have you ever regretted trying to lift somebody's hands up and became your enemy, and you are asking yourself, why did I do now, David wrote these psalms during the time when some people went to lie to the king, to Pharaoh, that, to Saul, that David wanted to kill him and overthrow him. Praise the Lord. Meanwhile, all David did, he helped Saul. He helped Saul finish Goliath. He was just a farm boy with no palace or kingly ambition. Praise the Lord. Let me show you something. Psalms 20 and verse 1. Then David fled from Nahor in Ramah and went and said to Jonathan, What have I done? What is my iniquity? What is my sin before your father that he seeks my life? Have you ever been falsely accused or so? Have you been so badly hurt that you feel like you wanted a revenge? That's how David felt. 
in the same in, in chapter 24 from verse 9. Chapter 24, verse 9 of 1 Samuel. And David said to Saul, Why do you listen to these words of men who say, Indeed, David seeks your harm? Look this day, your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you into my own hand in the cave, and someone urged me to kill you. The same people that told David, kill him, the same one that told Saul, David wanted to kill him. He said, but my eyes peered you, and I said, I will not stretch out my hands against the Lord, for it is the Lord's anointed. Everyone under the sound of my voice, that the enemy has misinterpreted or misrepresented your heart, and have formed a siege against your life. In the precious name of Jesus, God will cause shame in their camp. Amen. This is what this was what was going on with David. David called it the wickedness of the wicked. They told the king, they said, David wanted to kill you and overthrow your throne. Praise the Lord. So we live in a very wicked world. Psalms chapter 74 and verse 20 says, Have respect to the covenant, for the dark places of the heart are full of the haunts of cruelty. Satanic cruelty is the explanation for every obstacle that we face in life. But God said it will not prevail. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore, prepare yourself and arise and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. Let's rise to our feet. So God is saying you are going to boldly declare. For verse 18, let's read together. I want to go verse 18. Verse 19, let's read. How many overcomers do we have this place this morning? How many of us this morning you believe that, you say, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar? and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kingdom of Judah. In other words, you are untouchable. He said, they will fight against you and they shall not prevail against you because how many of us you know from this morning God is with you? I, I want you to demonstrate this and I'm not joking. Demonstrate it like somebody that knows your she is untouchable. You can, you, can, you can walk and talk with some attitude. You can walk and show off with some attitude. People of God, don't joke. This is prophetic. This is prophetic. You can walk and make gestures with an attitude that I am untouchable. God's got my back. A fortified wall, untouchable. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth and confess and declare what you believe. I am untouchable by any power of hell, any power of darkness. You must be sure you are saying something. Listen, listen. What we are doing, we are actually doing warfare. So you might have to leave your seat. Let me tell you something. He says, therefore prepare yourself and arise and speak to them all that I command you. So verses 18 and 19 are the commandment. 
He said, do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you. So, the only way not to be dismayed is to boast in your talk this morning. And that boast is in the law. I am not about to lose anybody to Satan. Praise the Lord. He said, for behold, I have made you this day a fortified city. So you are going to open your mouth and demonstrate what you believe in words, in confessions, in declarations, like I am a fortified city. I am not going to lose no battle to Satan. I am a fortified city. You may want to walk around and demonstrate some confidence. I am not going to lose this battle to sickness. I'm not asking you to joke. I'm telling you to make confessions. Uh, prophesy over your life. Um, let somebody hear it. In the name of Jesus. Uh, we are in the days of vengeance. Uh, God's vengeance is speaking on my behalf. My God is a God of vengeance. Uh, is going to rid me of my enemies. It's going to wipe off all my enemies on the face of the earth. Lift up your voice and declare. Lift up your voice and confess. Somebody open your mouth and confess what God is saying concerning you. Open your mouth and confess. 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 I will not lose my battle. For my God is with me. Is an awesome war. I am not going to fail. I am not going to be put to shame. Lift up your voice and pray. The enemy will give way for me. Lift up your voice. Uh -huh. My enemy will not have the last laugh. My restoration is here. We are in the day of my restorations. The judgment of God over my enemies. Open your mouth and lift up your voice. Somebody open your mouth and lift up your voice. Somebody 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 lift up your voice. Lift up your voice this morning. Open your mouth and declare. I will overcome. I will overcome. I will win my battle, sir. Open your mouth and declare this morning. I rebuke every principalities and powers. Every power of darkness against my life. This is my days of visitations. The judgment of God is speaking. This is the day of vengeance. Lift up your voice and pray. Somebody open your mouth and declare judgment. The judgment of God. The judgment of God. The enemies will give way in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. Open your mouth and declare judgment. I win all my battles. I am fortified, untouchable. In the precious name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. I send back to the senders every arrow of evil, every arrow of failure. I send them back to the senders. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lebo shataka pahla baba. 
Mazoka patapaka la paka yabalaba. Reko pako toko pa. Maleba koshaya legaba. Mande bolobo shikaka te kopa liba. Leto soka papa paya palaba. In Jesus' precious name. Psalms 50 and verses 3 says, Our God comes and does not keep silence. A fire devours before him and round about him a mighty tempest rages. He calls to the heavens and above and to the earth that he may judge his people. I said earlier on, I said many people never leave the potentials. Let them come in quickly. Never leave the potentials of their lives. Now, in Job 31 and verse 2, the Bible says, For what is the allotment of God from above and the inheritance of the Almighty from on high? You are going to pray, Lord, this month of vengeance, Restore my allotment from on high. Whatever was apportioned me, was allotted to me from high, must be restored in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Every of my allotment from above, my inheritance in God, I take delivery. I receive delivery of them. Lift up your voice and pray. Your allotment, what is yours? Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. My allotment. My portion. My allotment, my own. My own, my own breakthrough. My own breakthrough. My own breakthrough. My own deliverance. Mine, 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 my own, my own, my own, my own. In Jesus' name. You didn't hear me. The Bible says, For what is the allotment of God from above? God apportions, He allots everyone's inheritance. The one you don't see is the one Satan is holding up. So, time of vengeance is a time of restoration. You see, the testimony of that sister, vengeance spoke, the person died, she was healed, she got a job. When vengeance speaks, there must be restoration. So, you are going to declare, it is your allotment that makes you, you. It is your allotment that defines you. Without your portion being allotted, you can live in the shadow for a lifetime. But that season is over. So you are going to pray, Lord, my own allotment, my portion, my inheritance in God, I take delivery of it. I receive it. Lift up your voice and pray. My allotment, my portion, my own, my own, my breakthrough, my deliverance, I receive it. Lift up your voice and pray. Cry unto God. Open your mouth, let him hear your voice. 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 Let him hear your voice, your passion, your passion, your own. Lift up your voice, my own, my own that would define me, that would define me, that would define me, that would define me. Lift up your voice, my original life, your original purpose for my life. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice, my own.
Open your mouth and ask for your portion. Your allotment. Your allotment. Enough of depending on people. Enough of, of begging. Your own allotment. Your own allotment. Your portion. <laughs> Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Open your mouth and pray. Lift up your voice. Somebody open your mouth and pray. Kako shata kapa tapa la pa kapa kupa ya riko pa la ba kato kapa ya bas mato shika kata pa. In Jesus' name. Let me say something this morning. Everyone was born with a glorious destiny. What went wrong went wrong because of Satan. So you can know how to pray. Whatever goes wrong in your life, that's not who God created. So we are now praying that what God created for you should be delivered. God did not create anyone to live from paycheck to paycheck. God did not even create anyone to depend on anyone, not even on the government. It's not possible. Is somebody hearing me? But when your whole portion is allotted, you might be living with people today, people will soon live with you. You might be managing one or two small rooms right now. When your allotment is delivered, that your allotment will end you up in the mansion. You might be on a job that you know this is not, but you have no choice. But when your allotted portion comes, you become an employer yourself. So we are going to pray. So when God created everyone, he assigned the beginning of your journey to recovery is believing that God did not create you like this. So God is not a problem. And there's another problem. Don't make anyone believe this is my own. This is my destiny. No, it's not your destiny. Satan stopped the fulfillment, the expression of your real destiny. And that's why God called this month for. Is somebody hearing me? Psalms 95 verse 1 says, no, no, no. Look, we're going to go to Luke, Luke chapter 21 and verse 22. Luke 21 and verse 22. Let's read together. Luke 21, 22. Luke 21 and 22. Let's read again one more time. Your own portion are is written down. So they don't fight for me because of Satan. But days of judgment, like a day like this, is the day that they come to fulfillment. So we are going to pray. Everything written about me must find expression, must find fulfillment in my life. Everything written about my life, lift up your voice and begin to pray. What you wrote, what you wrote, what you wrote, 
your manual for my own life must be fulfilled. Your manual for my own life must be fulfilled. Your manual for my own life must be fulfilled. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Open your mouth. Is that all you can say? Whatever is written about you must find fulfillment. Whatever is written about you must find fulfillment. Whatever is written about you must find fulfillment. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Everything written about you. Everything written for you. Your inheritance in God. Your inheritance in God. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Oh, God is the God of a second chance. Is the God of unlimited opportunities. Is the God of unlimited possibilities. Yes, it is not over. It is not over. It cannot be over. Everything written about you must find fulfillment. Your babies must be delivered. Your prosperity, your health must be restored. Lift up your voice, your home, your family. Lift up your voice and pray. Everything written about you must begin to begin to be delivered. I decree the delivery. 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 Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and pray. In Jesus' precious name. He said, I will execute judgment in Egypt. I will execute judgment. And in the execution of that judgment, the blood, some blood was shed, the blood of animals in those days. But we thank God because Jesus shed his own blood. So we no longer need the blood of animals. We have his blood. So with his blood is God's judgment. As you eat his flesh and drink his blood this morning, on your behalf, the judgment of God will speak. Let everyone be inside, inside this sanctuary now. Everyone in the cafe should come if there are people there. As you drink his blood, as you heat his body, in the name of Jesus, on your behalf, the judgment of God will speak. God called the killing of the firstborn of Egypt, he called it his judgment. Whoever died in the life family of that sister, it was God's judgment. That kind of judgment will happen on your behalf in the name of Jesus. In every area that you have been misrepresented, in the name of Jesus, just as Saul realized, they will find out that their help is in your hands. What they need to survive 
will end up being in your hands in the name of Jesus. God killed the firstborn, even of animals in Egypt. Everyone holding anything down against you, nothing in their life will prosper. Their life will not prosper. Their businesses will not prosper. Their career will not prosper. Everyone holding down anything against you, every Sambalat and Tobias of your life, in the name of Jesus, whatever they lay their hands on will not prosper. Because when Israel left Egypt, Egypt was bankrupt. As you drink his blood and you eat his body this morning, you become untouchable by any power of hell. This week, the blood will speak for you. This whole week, the blood will cover you. This whole week, the blood will fight on your behalf. This whole week, the blood will bring favor your way. In the precious name of Jesus, I decree a separation between you and on, with every unholy alliance in the name of Jesus. Every smiling snake around you that portray, that shows to be friend but they are enemies. I decree a termination of such relationship. Yeah. Said, Those that lay you away shall go away from you. In the name of Jesus, they will go away from you. Your life will be free of satanic snares. Somebody is coming next Sunday with a testimony. Amen. Somebody is coming back on Sunday with a testimony. Amen. Somebody is coming back next week with a breakthrough. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name. Amen. By the, the blood of Jesus, I prevail over sickness. Oh, by the blood of Jesus, I prevail. By the blood, by 